Hey everyone, uh, I hope you're all doing well. So for the past couple weeks, I've been doing videos on current events happening on our world right now. But um, I've taken a little bit of a break from doing videos about my book, which is Fellowship of Suffering, and it deals with PTSD and trauma-based issues. But I think now it's about time to get back into it. And I'm gonna pick up where I left off, which was on a uh, series based around depression. And I mentioned in my last video that the reason why I'm doing this is not only because A, it's very beneficial for where I'm at in the book, but B, it's also very beneficial, I believe, for where we're at as a society. Because of everything going on right now with the coronavirus and the riots and uh, all the political discord and things like that, I believe that, and I, I, I think I have very good reason to believe, that depression is at an all-time high in our country. Um, people who have maybe have never experienced depression are experiencing it for the first time. So I thought it would be a good idea to talk about what depression is like, why we have it, and what we can do about it in a practical day-to-day -day, uh, way. So if you guys missed my first video, uh, my first video was all about what depression is like, and you can watch the full thing in the description below. But for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna give you a brief recap. In that video, I talked about the idea of the broken spirit, which is a Hebrew idea and a Hebrew description of what depression was like. And what I mentioned is that the word spirit, or ruach in Hebrew, was seen by the Hebrews as almost being like an organ, uh, much like your heart or your mind or your lungs. But instead of having a physical purpose, meaning uh, serving your physical body, it had an emotional purpose. It was actually the organ that was most responsible for your emotional well-being. So what it did is it helped both give you self-control when it came to your emotions, meaning that it enabled you to resist emotions when it came in so they didn't just take over you and rule your life, but it also gave you your drive, your dynamism, all of your passion and your willpower. That's what the spirit was responsible for. If you break your spirit, if it gets broken by some means or matter, what's going to happen to you is you're going to lose all that drive. You're going to lose all that dynamism. You're going to be in a state where you don't really care. You're going to be apathetic. You're going to feel like you don't have any energy. You don't have any will. Everything's going to lose its pleasure, its passion, its, its goodness in your life. You're going to feel like everything is too difficult for you. You're going to realize that things that once were something that was very good for you no longer feel that way. You're not even going to want to eat or sleep properly. Uh, just everything has lost its flavor and everything has lost its goodness in your eyes, right? That's what it's like to have this broken spirit. But in this video, I wanted to really hone in on this idea of why we get depressed. It's very important to understand because unfortunately in our culture today, we tend to treat mental issues as if they are more like a disease, when in reality we should be treating them more like their symptoms. Okay, and uh, I want to be very clear here because I don't want anyone to misunderstand me. If I were to go to the doctor and have a disease, the way that, that doctor would treat me is they would look at the disease and they would prescribe me something, meaning that they don't really care about why I have that disease. They don't care about what I came in contact with or who I was around. That's not really on their agenda. They only really care about what the disease is, and then they have a very, uh, very intense and very descriptive way to treat that disease. And it's almost going to be 100% effective because that's how it works. Mental issues aren't like that, and we have to understand that. They are more like symptoms. Therefore, it is far more important to understand the cause of your mental issue than it is to understand what you can do about it. Because depending on the cause is depending on what kind of a treatment you should utilize. So let me go back to my metaphor and say, okay, instead of going to the doctor with a disease, what if I went to the doctor with a symptom? Now all of a sudden it becomes very important to understand why I have that symptom. So if I come to the doctor with a fever, for instance, it's very different than coming to him with a flu, right? If I come to him with a fever, as unpleasant as that fever is, the cause of that fever could be numerous. There, there could be a lot of reasons why I might be having that fever. And if all the doctor says is like, well, you have a fever, so let's try to lower that thing. They might be ignoring the root causes and therefore they might be doing more damage to me than they are helping me. So for instance, if the doctor starts giving me flu medication to try to get me, uh, to get my temperature down, well, what if I'm not, what if I don't have a high temperature because I have a flu? What if instead I have a high temperature because I'm overheated? That medication is going to be either A, ineffective, or B, it's going to cause problems that didn't already exist. The same thing is true with mental issues. If you go into a modern day psychologist, unfortunately, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of the bad ones, they're not going to be very interested in why you're depressed or why you have some sort of anxiety disorder. They're only interested in getting rid of the symptoms. So they'll give you some sort of a medication to help abate the symptoms, but because they don't understand the cause, that medication is not really dealing with the real issue. It is so vital and important to understand the cause. That's why good therapists and good counselors 
They're going to spend an awful lot of time trying to figure out the cause before they put you on a treatment plan because they understand that, that is very, very vital to your mental well-being. So in this video, like I said, I'm going to try to talk about the causes so that you might have a better understanding of why you're feeling the way that you're feeling and you'll be ready for my next video which is going to talk about what you can do practically to help with those symptoms. So before I get into that, I did want to make a quick distinction. So Andrew Solomon who wrote the book, The Noonday Demon, he makes this distinction and I'm really glad he does because it's an important one to make. What he says in the book is he says there's a difference between what he calls grief and what he calls depression. Grief, he says, is all of the same symptoms of depression, meaning if you were to just look at the symptoms, they would look absolutely identical to the person who actually has depression. The distinction, though, is that grief is caused by something external, whereas depression is caused by something internal. So let me qualify that. So if somebody goes through a massive loss in their family, or they go through some sort of a hardship, and they have all the, the, uh, the various symptoms of depression, that person is not actually depressed. They're grieving over something external that's happened in their life. Someone like me, however, I don't need an external reason to feel depressed. I will just simply go through states of depression because there's something internally wrong with me. There's something internally wrong with my brain chemistry. And this is what it means to be clinically depressed. You have something internally wrong with you that isn't external. And so uh, far from you reacting to something external, What's internal in you is causing the depression, and now your depression is reacting to everything else. Or to put it another way, your depression isn't caused by something outside, but instead it becomes like a lens that you put over your eyes, and now the entire world is filtered through this distorted view of depression, which is going to make everything far worse than it really is, and it's actually going to be a vicious cycle, where the things that you do are going to increase your depression because you're already depressed. So let me talk a little bit about those external causes and then I'll finish up by talking a little bit more about those internal causes. So the external causes are predominantly some sort of an overuse of the spirit. So um, in today's day and age this is going to be rampant because the external causes for depression are going to be very, very well known and they're going to be very, very predominant for our society. So what is an overuse of the spirit? Essentially what it is, is either over a long period of time you have a negative emotion or over a short period of time you have something intensely traumatic trigger some sort of a massive emotion in you that immediately breaks your spirit. So it's kind of like a bone, right? Think of your spirit like a bone in this metaphor. If I put too much weight on a bone, it breaks, right? If I put too much weight on my spirit, it breaks. It can't hold up the pressure. So what are the kind of emotions that could break your spirit? Well, in the Bible it gives us several. Uh, the first one, and it's the most common one, and therefore this is why most people associate sadness with depression is sadness, right? So you have some sort of an intense loss in your life. Either you've gone through a huge period like Job where it's just one thing after another, constant sadness finally breaks your spirit, or it's just one massive thing. Maybe your spouse died, uh, or maybe a parent died, or maybe you lost your job. Some massive thing happened in your life and that massive emotion caused your spirit to break and now you're in a state of depression. Another very common emotion to cause depression would be guilt or shame. In the Psalms, oftentimes David talks about having a broken spirit and a contrite heart. What it means is that he did something wrong. He did something that provoked a lot of guilt in his life. And that guilt and that shame broke his spirit. Right? He couldn't handle the regret and uh, that just longing to have done the right thing, but knowing that he failed to do so. Right? That guilt broke his spirit. Another very common cause is anxiety. Right? It says anxiety in the heart causes depression. This is in the book of Proverbs. What this means is that if I'm anxious about things, that constant anxiety is going to weigh on my spirit and eventually it's going to break. And usually people that have anxiety-based depression, what happens is they go through cycles. So they'll feel very, very anxious and then all of a sudden they'll put pressure on their spirit. It'll break. They'll go into a state of depression. It may last hours, may last days, but then their spirit will heal just enough to allow them to feel that anxiety again and then it will go back down because it will break again and they'll go up and down, up and down, up and down, sometimes for months at a time and that could be a very, very horrible place to be in. Uh, another very common one is envy or lust. So what that means is it means just a constant craving to have something that you don't already have. Uh, and this is very predominant in our society right now because of social media. So if you're scrolling through social media and you're seeing what other people have, it all of a sudden makes you less 
grateful for the things that you have. And all of a sudden you become envious for what you don't have. You're looking at other people's posts and you're like, man, why don't I look like that? Why don't I go on vacations like that? Why isn't my marriage like that? Why are my kids like that? Why isn't my job like that, right? And you're comparing yourself and that constant comparison is actually, little do you know, pushing down on your spirit, it's weighing down on you and it's breaking you. Uh, the other really predominant one is loneliness, right? So if you feel like there's no one in your life that you can really connect with, that you're, you're, you're kind of alone and, and you don't really have anyone that really gets you or understands you or cares about you, that loneliness can really, really destroy you. And ironically, this isn't necessarily because you're not hanging around anyone. In fact, loneliness-based depression is most common in urban areas, not rural ones. I mean, if you go to rural areas that actually have low populations, yeah, there's low populations, but everyone knows each other. They understand what they're going through. They care about one another in a deep way. You wake up, you walk outside, you know your neighbors, you know who they are, you know what their lives are like, right? You talk with one another, you have dinner with one another. There's a connection there. But you wake up in an urban society, you wake up, you walk outside, you don't know any of your neighbors. You drive in your car, you drive around total strangers. You go to work with strangers. In fact, a lot of people that are even close to you, you don't really know who they are and they don't really know who you are, right? We are surrounded by strangers and that subsequent loneliness can be incredibly destructive to us. And given what's going on with the coronavirus right now, it's very likely that a lot of people are having loneliness-based depression because they're isolating. Uh, they're isolating because they're trying to keep at bay the spread of the coronavirus. And hey, it's helping the spread of the coronavirus, but it might be very detrimental to your mental health because it's destroying you with isolation. Uh, also, when people feel rejected, it can increase their loneliness. So if you go through a bad breakup, or if someone starts bullying you, or talking bad about you, or slandering you, these kind of things can cause depression because once again, it makes you feel alone. Uh, and the final one that I'm going to give you, the final really common cause for emotional-based depression uh, would be, it's not, it's not really loneliness, but it's aimlessness. So one of the things that causes us to feel like we have a good life is the fact that we have purpose, we have meaning, we're doing something. Uh, and a job and career, that, those could be very, very good places to link your meaningfulness, right? That, that, that you have a cause in life, you have something that you're doing or accomplishing. Uh, People who have jobs where they feel like, man, what am I really doing? Is it really accomplishing anything? They go through this type of depression off a lot. People who might lose their job, they go through this depression off a lot. That's why, by the way, a lot of elderly people, when they retire, they tend to die very quickly after they retire. Why? Because their job was where they were finding their meaningfulness. Now their meaningfulness is gone, depression takes over, and their will to live kind of collapses. And so therefore they have no more fight, they have no more drive, and they just kind of end up dying. Uh, is a very, very tragic thing. But yes, purpose, or lack thereof, can be a very common cause of depression in our day-to-day -day lives. Now, just given those, those short ones, and by the way, that's not an exhaustive list, but just giving that short list, I hope what you see is you see that depending on the cause, or the cause is, it could be a combination of emotions that are causing your depression, but depending on the cause is depending on the treatment. Right? If I try to treat loneliness-based depression like anxiety-based depression, then it's going to be totally, uh, totally ineffective on me. Meaning that uh, maybe someone who's struggling with anxiety, depression, needs to learn how to calm down. They need to learn breathing techniques. They need to learn how to uh, distract themselves from the overwhelming thoughts that, that cloud their mind. They need to learn how to maybe pray through some things, uh, meditate on some things, calm down in, in various different ways. Maybe they need to exercise more or, or uh, learn ways to deal with their stress that are more productive. Right? That could be very effective for someone with anxiety-based depression, but that kind of treatment is going to be totally ineffective with someone who's struggling with loneliness depression, which their solution should be they need to hang around people a little bit more. They need to talk to people. They need to try to connect. Right? That's going to be their solution. So it's really vital that you understand why you're depressed. And unfortunately, like I said, most people who are treated for depression actually are going through grief. And because all they're getting is medication, while their symptoms of depression are going away, their causes for depression are still very prevalent and therefore their state continues to be broken. They need to learn how to deal with whatever's causing their grief, otherwise their depression will never cease. It's also important to understand that people who struggle with chronic depression like myself, because we don't like emotions, and most depressed people are like this, we don't like the emotions, we don't like to think about things, it's easy for us to compartmentalize, therefore our spirit is very weak and because we're not utilizing our spirit the way that it's intended to, meaning processing emotion and dealing with it, uh, we kind of think of it as useless, and therefore our spirit is incredibly fragile, and the smallest thing can break it or set it off. 
Another thing that's important to understand is possibly you're having an internal reason for depression, but it's an internal reason that could go away. So for instance, a woman who just had a baby, she might be having postpartum depression, which is caused by a hormonal shift, right? That hormonal shift is an internal cause for depression, but it's something that will eventually even itself out. Um, so they need to be patient with that. Other people might be going through depression, not because of some sort of hormonal shift, but maybe you have a thyroid problem. Thyroid problems are actually a really big cause and indicator for depression. Uh, maybe you're, uh, instead of having some sort of a biological or chemical imbalance, maybe your cause for depression is something to do with your health, right? Maybe you're sick, right? Sickness can cause depression because again, you're, you're aimless and you're, you're feeling just terrible all the time and therefore that's causing depression. But at any rate, what I'm hoping that you guys understand through watching this video is once again the complexity and the nuance of why depression exists inside of our lives. We shouldn't cookie cutter the solution. We shouldn't look at it and just say like this solution is a one size fits all. There is no such thing as a one size fits all solution for your depression. This is why in Psalm 42, as the psalmist is talking about his depressive state, he asks the very wise question, why are you downcast on my soul and why are you disquieted within me? Meaning he wants to understand his depressed state before he seeks to move forward and start dealing with his depressed state. So again, I hope this video has helped you guys maybe understand some of the reasons why you might be feeling depressed and maybe giving you a good traction so you can begin dealing with your depression in a much more practical way. In the next video, like I said, I'm going to get into more, um, more nuts and bolts kind of things, more practical uh, solutions to our depression issues. If you're someone like me, what you need to learn how to do is learn how to cope with your depressed system, symptoms better when the seasons of depression come. For those people who are going through grief, you may need to learn some different strategies, as I said, to deal with your grief and to deal with the things going on in your life that are causing your grief that will help you deal with your depression. But at any rate, hope you guys are doing well, and I will talk to you again soon. Thank you.